Hi, my name is Christopher Irizarry, and I have a PhD in uh, genetics and genomics from UCLA. I'm a professor of veterinary medicine at Western University College of Veterinary Medicine in Pomona, California. And um, I did a two-year postdoc in the Neuropsychiatric Institute uh, at UCLA, where I studied the genetic basis of behavior in predicting uh, response to antidepressant treatment. And uh, my group got a patent on my work. So um, I'm here, I'd like to address um, Mr. Stone's question about the genetics of the breed, and then I'd like to talk a little bit about the part of um, talking about how we identify pit bulls, because uh, my research group has published two papers on visual identification compared to DNA identification, and we've shown that visual identification is horrendous. People can't visually ID dogs. A lab pointer cross can be mistaken for a pit bull visually. <clears throat> um, also, uh, the, even if many people, we look to inter-observer reliability, and if many people say that a dog is a certain breed, even if an overwhelming majority of those people agree on what the visual appearance is, um, it turns out the DNA evidence doesn't necessarily agree with that, and in fact, more often than not, the a visual ID is wrong. So, um, I'm curious, and the question doesn't have to be answered now, but I'm curious as to how the breed determination by either Dr. Greasy or a designee would occur. And if it's visual, does that mean that a lot of people are going to incur the cost of the like, genetic test to refute that because it's being taken as prima facie evidence? My second point is um, in regards to the genetic basis of the dog. Um, Dr. Juicy talked about the dogs as being not genetically engineered. It's actually, um, they're, they're selected, but they're selected for morphology, the physical appearance of the dog. There's many pit bull crosses that don't look like a pit bull, and they might look like a wire hair terrier and have part pit bull in them. What people do is they select for the physical traits of the dog. And a recent publication in 2010 that came out of uh, National Institutes of Health, Elaine Ostrander, who did the canine genome, their group showed that the morphological appearance of a dog is controlled by 50 genes out of the 20,000 genes that make up a dog's genome. And so when you say a dog looks like a pit bull, you're really saying it has four or five genes that affect its physical shape, its head yeah. shape, its snout. And it has no basis whatsoever on its behavior. And I respectfully ask, ask all of you to consider, I agree with Dr. Drusi that the overpopulation and the death of 3,000 dogs is a problem. And in that regard, I would support a spay neuter. But to suggest that any dog that has the gene that makes short snouts and like a round head somehow also has a gene for aggression is not true. Um, I'm blinking so quickly. Three or four generations that you breed from a dog, you're only going to have like 12 and a half percent of the DNA from that great great ancestor. So most dogs that look like pits are crossed with other things, even the DNA test. So it's always the pit that it's attributed to, and it's a bad thing, even if it's 75% lab. And um, I thank you all for your time. Thank you. And, and we're going to ask the doctor to comment that we'll hold off and see if anybody else is similar, and you can be prepared to answer all the questions that came up during the public testimony. Thank you for your testimony.